Okay, uh, hello everyone. Welcome to the presentation, Why IoT Needs 5G. Uh, I am, uh, my name is Paweł Owczarski. I work in Ericsson, I'm system engineer there. And uh, I would like to introduce you to the world of the IoT and uh, how IoT works uh, with 5G and why those are connected. First of all, I would like to talk something about machine to machine communication. This is nothing ac actually new. Uh, the basic concept and the basic control system are with us since many years. And uh, machine to machine applications uh, have been developed to, to meet specific needs in specific industries. What is going to be changed if we talked about the Internet of Things? Well, um, the design and implementation of Internet-based systems connects together devices that interact with the physical environment. So in other words, uh, we will have machine-type communication through the Internet. Uh, if we think about IoT, it's not easy one thing, it's not one uh, single entity, but this is a number of wide variety of use cases, and those use cases have different requirements to met. So if we talk about here left-hand side and uh, massive, mas massive um, machine tape communication, it's a new thing now. Massive IoT, it's, introduced, it's being introduced by many companies like Ericsson, like Nokia. And uh, what we really need to meet here is a low cost, low energy, with a small data volumes, but massive number of devices. The best examples is like a smart building, logistic, tracking, etc. And, and the smart sensors like the smart agriculture. Um, we don't need to think about the time, how fast the data will come to us. We need to only ensure that we are capable to have a massive number of devices connected to the network at the same time. But also we have a right-hand side here. And here is much more sensitive data. Here are much more sensitive data, like remote healthcare, like traffic safety and control. Here, we really need to think about extremely low latency and very high availability. Like if we talk about self-driving cars, <laughs> it's important to, to have all data in time. So it's, it's not like I, IoT, it's not like one IoT. We have a number of uh, use cases and number of requirements. OK. Uh, but machine type communications is not only licensed cellular IoT. We have three types of communication used right now. First, of course, it's uh, 2G, 3G, and 4G, and 5G, with three new technologies introduced last year in 3GPP, uh, like extended coverage GSM IoT, LTE machine type communication category mobile one and narrow-bound IoT. But we also have other technologies like short-range radio. Those technologies are mostly used for wireless sensor networks, and every sensor can be connected to the, to the internet, but through the, through the controller. It cannot be directly connected. The best example is a Zigbee or the Bluetooth Low Energy. And we have a third category, uh, also unlicensed long-range radio, like uh, Sigfox on, on LoRa. Uh, it's also star topology, but with very huge limitations, uh, because there offers only limited number of base stations with very low capacity. So in later presentation, we will just focus on the licenses cellular IoT, like uh, 4G, LTE, or 5G. Because this is the only option uh, that we can provide 5.9.3 reliability, so 99.999, 99 
the requirement for the telecommunication. And uh, ultra low latency for critical IoT application in health in the healthcare or road safety. Okay, uh, we need to think what we really need for, for IoTs to, to be in the market. Very important is the coverage. Uh, existing GPRS or, or LTE coverage is about 140 decibels. Well, it's a lot, but it's not as much as we need. Thus, we need to extend this range using uh, f existing technologies like CATM1 and narrowband IoT by 15 or 20 decibels. Uh, it means, do you know how much it is? If we, talk, if we think about uh, 140 decibels and plus 15 or 20, if we, if we think about distance, how longer the distance of the coverage is, can you can guess? Yes, those are kilometers, but um, it's seven times more than the current coverage, so it's a lot. And it gives us possibility to also use sensors in the basements, like some measurements and, and indoors in the basement. Very important. Uh, what is also very important for the IoT devices is the cost. Uh, in the 3GPP, in their certification in release 8, uh, introduced CAT4. And now we have CAT, CAT M and narrowband IoT costs uh, 5 and 10, 10 times less. It means that you can afford for 10 devices instead of one. So every sensor can be really connected because the cost is not really a problem right now. Um, but if we turn on the sensor, it would be good if the sensor can work at least for 10 years or a longer time. It can be achieved by a uh, deep sleep mode. It's a new thing introduced for LTE narrow, narrow bind IoT. It basically means that the interval between the connections is extended. Uh, do you know what paging is in LTE? Well. Um, you are still connected, even if you are not on, in the call. So the base station sends you periodically information and look for answer if you are still here or we are looking for you. And that time interval is about one second. So to be perfectly, per it's 1.28 seconds. But we don't need it really for uh, IoT devices, so we will extend it to five. Oh, sorry, to 5.12 seconds with a deep sleep mode, which gives us lots of energy savings. But we still have many concerns, like extreme scalability, and uh, uh, we need to put one million of devices in the one cell, LTEM, and in case of narrowband IoT, it's a 2,000 two uh, devices in one cell. Uh, yeah, it's nice, but it's very demanding. Let me talk about the current technologies, what we have. I was talking about uh, CAT M1 and narrowband IoT, but in fact, I didn't really say what it is. Those are new, tech, new massive IoT technologies introduced in the 3GPP release 13. Uh, CAT M1 uh, operates on 1.5 megahertz bandwidth. Well, it's much less than the normal LTE device because your normal cell phone uses bandwidth of 20 megahertz. And if you can use 4x4 MIMO, it means that in the carrier aggregation, up to five carriers, so you, are, you can utilize 100 megahertz. That's why you can have uh, 300 megabits per second using your uh, last, um, using your last uh, shipping uh, s smartphone. Okay, but here we have much lower bandwidth. It gives us uh, 10 years on the, uh, on the battery life. It gives us more coverage, 
So we can use this device in the basement and um, in some, some small villages as well. But peak throughput is much lower. It's not anymore 300 megabits, but it's one, mega, one megabits per second. And um, uh, CATM is a new technology as well as narrowband IoT. Here we have only two, 200 kilohertz. And this is really small amount of data, but the cost of the module is really small. And we can, we can connect uh, lots of devices per one cell. And uh, the last one category is extended coverage GSM IoT. So uh, we can reuse uh, our frequency for the GSM uh, in the coverage when there is no any LTE broadband yet. So we have many great things right now, and this is introduced, by, but um, it's not enough. Still, it's not enough. Um, so if we have a lot of, a lot of nice things like uh, narrow bind IoT and CATM, why we really need 5G? Well, we need, because to have uh, availability, one milliseconds with one minus five failure rate for billions of devices, it's too much for RT network, it's too much for 5G network. Uh, if we talk about reliability, to, to have message always in the correct place in the right time for billions of devices, well, it's also too much for, for our current for our current technology. Also, number of data to send. Um, well, each device utilizes small amounts of, of data, but if we summarize everything, then we have a really big amount of data. Uh, low cost of modules, as we said before, it's important to afford to have in, in every sensor. Capacity, well, that's the main concern we have right now in most uh, of the communi telecommunications companies. Uh, we really need to connect billions of new IoT devices. And our architecture is not capable to do it yet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we are working. We are working on it. And, and in 5G, I promise, it will work. Then uh, uh, another is low energy. Of course, we need to have 10. 10 years, at least only one battery, and the latency, uh, self-driving cars, uh, time-critical services. In LTE, we have 10 milliseconds of latency, too much for gaming, and of course, too much for the surgery. But in 5G, it's one millisecond. It's a huge improvement. OK, uh, 5G looks very nice, but how we can achieve this, really? Well. We need to introduce something called NR. It's a new radio. In the next 3GPP release, release 14, it will be proposed to have something called non-standalone 5G new radio. It's a first step to 5G. Uh, as we have uh, right now in many other technologies, as we had in the history, it's not like we are introducing something immediately. We need to have a time. And uh, I suppose that the time for introduction of 5G will take at least 10 years. So narrowband, uh, sorry, so uh, new radio, non-standalone 5G new radio, it's a first step towards the 5G. And these steps is we will use a core and the upper layers from LTE, and we will add new spectrum, so new radio, which will give us uh, much uh, more capability because in the LTE, even in the evolution, we can use from one gigahertz up to six gigahertz. And now we can use one gigahertz up to 100 gigahertz. This is not linear. So we can imagine how much capacity we have. In um, every, in, in one frame, we can have, in one LTE frame, we can have 108, 180 kilobytes of data. So, Capacity is growing, thanks to NR, first step to, to IoT, first step to 5G, and Ericsson is there. Uh, what, what more? Um, to, 
send more data using the same um, using the same spectrum, we need to have a new modulation. But we will start from the latest one, for the legacy one used in the LTE. It's a conventional orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, but with some uh, additional plugins. We will use scalable numerology. I will talk about it later uh, in the next slide. But uh, here I, I would like to talk about windowing. Uh, in the LTE career, uh, we have low uh, out of bands emissions, which is not useful. And it's called uh, band guards, and it's up to the 13%. So using the windowing technology, we can reuse that band edges to, to send also the information. Uh, scalable numerology uh, is needed because, uh, as, as I show on the previous slides, we will use from one gigahertz up to one, uh, up to 100 gigahertz is a lot. So um, the frequency domain, so the wavelength, differs a lot. Thus, uh, we need to adjust our waveform to handle this wave carrier frequencies and deployments. Uh, of course, 5G must work also with the legacy technologies like uh, 2G, 3G, 5G. So even if the remote control, if the sensor is disconnected for the 5G network for some reason, um, we have uh, legacy technologies and our devices and uh, Ericsson devices as well as other vendor devices are capable to use all technologies in one in one box. And something maybe m the most important from, from our point of view is how the architecture will differ. So if we will look at the 2D, 3G technologies, then we have a core, um, then we have a controller of the base station, and of course the user equipment. In the 4G, we had a significant change. To speed up, we reduce, we, we, we are not using the special controller, but the controller is placed in the radio base station, and we have a connection between two radio stations, um, for example, Elastic Run, and uh, mm, smartphone or any other managed element. Then 5G goes one step further. Core is now virtualized, so it's in the cloud. Then we split inode in B into virtualized elements and uh, some lower, lower uh, layer application like antenna and other stuff which cannot be really virtualized. But it gives us that the backhaul characteristic, the latency is less than five, five milliseconds. And also it's really easy to add the new services and the connection between uh, between inode Bs in case of, for example, handover to other is much faster. And we have um, latency, let's say 50, 25 microseconds. This is great. OK. Um, I almost reached my time. I have uh, one minute. So small summary. Connectivity is away from us since many years, but IT connectivity, IoT connectivity based on LTE, IoT connectivity based on 5G is something what we really need. And the 5G can address a range of IoT requirements that are not available to, to meet in the technologies like even modern now LTE, but LTE is not enough. We need 5G. Um, we have still 20 seconds for questions, if you, if you have any. <laughs> I, I, uh. Okay. Yes. Um. Yes, 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 yes. 
And yeah, it's, it's very difficult. If we talk about 100 gigahertz, this is a real millimeter wave. So as you see here, the gap is really huge. So um, this is beneficial, but I suppose 50% of signal can only be utilized. But it's really something we, we can use, uh, at the, at, and even on this high frequency. But it's, it's, good, it's a good question, and we are working for it to have a new modulation. We cannot break the physics. <laughs> OK, any other questions? I think we run out of time, one minute. So thank you, thank you very much for your attention, and hope to, to see you again. Thank you. Thank you.